Right, so in this video, I'm first going to analyse Manchester United's defensive issues against Atalanta. I'm then going to be talking about why I was impressed with Rashford's performance despite his poor finishing. And then I'll talk about how United turned around this game to eventually win it 3-2. Also, after this video, check the description as I have got a video podcast coming out, hopefully today, so that should be linked in the description, as well as a video looking at whether Zinazine Zidane would be a good Manchester United manager. But before that, for cheap, good quality football jerseys, retro jerseys and tracksuits, go over to www.jerseyfever.com link will be left in the description and use code AlantisFootball for 5% off. So let's get into it and I'm not going to analyse the game as a whole as I usually do as this game followed a similar pattern to a lot of the other Manchester United games this season so I do feel like I would be repeating myself so instead I'm going to analyse individual moments in the game. So let's start off by looking at Atalanta's first goal which I think had the most errors in because the second goal did come from a corner which did have its faults but I think the first goal is easier to analyse from a tactical and a systemic point of view whereas from the set piece there are a lot of different factors that come into it. So the ball goes over the top of the United back line and you can see Lindelof is in the channel here and there's not too many problems but anytime a centre back does get drawn out of the back line it's important that the other centre back in that back line organises not only himself positionally but drags other players into the positions that have been vacated by the other centre back being drawn out. So Lindelof does well to hold up the ball and he forces it backwards. But as you can see here, Coop Miners is the player that's causing the problem in the United back line as Shaw is drawn towards him, which leaves the space in behind Lindelof for the pass to be played down the channel. But what should happen is either Shaw or Maguire talks to the other one, with Maguire pulling on to Coop Miners because there's no other Atalanta player around him. So he's a free man. So Shaw should drop off, Maguire should push up to Coop Miners to cut off that ball, and this would solve the problem as Shaw would be able to cut off the pass in behind Lindelof. But this doesn't happen and I do think this is a difference between a very good centre-back like Maguire and an elite centre-back like Ruben Diaz or Van Dijk who I think would organise a back line a lot better in this situation. But you can see as a ball gets moved on into the crossing position both Shaw and Maguire seem to be caught in two minds being aware of Coop Miners ready for the pullback but neither player really makes a decision whether to go to Coop Miners and cut off the cutback or drop into this position to cut off the ball across a six yard box. Instead they are sitting in between doing neither. In my opinion both players are at fault sure if he's going to push up onto Coop Miners from the original phase of play he's got to stay with him because by dropping back there's now no player on Coop Miners because he was a man who had pushed up to him on the edge of the box. But Maguire has to be the main man at fault here. He seems very indecisive of his positional play. He seems to never really commit to a defensive action, always getting caught in two minds. The ball gets put across the box, but McTominay also has to take some of the blame behind Maguire. He has one job, which is to stop Pasalic getting in front of him, which he doesn't do, and in the end, it's a simple tap-in. And this goal was really a combination of individual errors. The second Atalanta goal did come from a set piece, but I'm not great at analysing set pieces, as without knowing the exact defensive setup, I can't really analyse in that much detail but from what I can see it looks like United are using a zonal marking system with Shaw being the blocker rather than the man marker and his job is really just to stop Demiral getting a free run at the ball which he doesn't do to great success but Maguire has to be the player to attack the ball in that area he doesn't do that Demiral gets ahead and knocks it into the net and United are 2-0 down now despite being 2-0 down going into half time United didn't actually face the same issues that they have faced throughout this season which is usually breaking down a deep defensive unit and this is because Atalanta were using a man-to-man aggressive pressing system similar to how Leeds approached the game against Manchester United on the opening day of the season and what this means is with Atalanta's central midfield pushing high up onto United's central midfielders it leaves space in behind and we saw United exploit this a few times for McTominay making runs in behind his marker into that space which is something he did very well against Leeds last season and so United didn't actually have trouble getting in behind the Atalanta midfield running at their back line or even creating chances the problem actually came with finishing those chances and in particular Marcus Rashford was very wasteful throughout the first half missing two big chances and squandering the chance to get a shot away from another one but despite this I was quite impressed with Marcus Rashford's play throughout the first half not his finishing though mainly just his movement which I think adds another dimension to United's attack that they desperately need because if you look at the players that usually play behind Ronaldo in Solskjaer's 4-2-3-1 they don't have that player who can make those direct diagonal runs in behind a higher defensive line because even though we do see Fernandes and Greenwood make runs into goal scoring positions they do this more around the box rather than from higher up the pitch and it's because Rashford knows how to time his run perfectly coming inside at the perfect time to make the run from the blind side of the defender and using his acceleration and pace to get into the goal scoring position and we saw this for his goal to make it 2-1 with Bruno Fernandes's pass with the outside of his boot being perfectly weighted and despite Rashford's finishing being very poor in the first half he opens up his body giving that Thierry Henry-esque finish 
passing it into the far corner and it's exactly this type of goal that Rashford needs to score more often and if he can get into these positions this can legitimately make him an elite player because on Rashford's day there's not many players that can combine that pace acceleration movement off the ball and finishing ability that Rashford does have when he's playing at his best. Despite all these faults I do have to give Solskjaer credit as straight out the gate in the second half United were like a different team. It seemed like they were playing with the intensity that you would usually see a team play with when it gets to the last 10 minutes of a game and after Rashford goal it did seem like a United comeback was written in the script. However this was certainly aided by Atalanta's style of play. They were far too open, leaving massive amounts of space in central midfield, essentially allowing United creative players to find space in the final third at ease. Whenever there was a turnover in the middle third, United really had to just play one vertical direct pass into the likes of Fernandes and once he would turn he was essentially running straight at Atalanta's back line. Bruno Fernandes was excellent throughout the second half, creating Rashford's goal, as well as playing a great reverse pass, finding Ronaldo's run in the box and his shot was just about saved by the Atalanta goalkeeper and Fernandes and Ronaldo were essentially playing as a front two throughout the second half. When Pogba came on we saw how good he is at progressing the ball with a number of good dribbles and forward passes and at one point in the game I think United had Pogba, Fernandes, Cavani, Jadon Sancho and Cristiano Ronaldo on the field at the same time and with Atalanta's style of play this was the perfect offensive game for United. So as I said it seemed like the comeback was inevitable and when Harry Maguire drilled the ball into the bottom corner it seemed like Old Trafford could sense a third goal coming and the winner in the 80th minute did come from a crossing situation which I did speak about in my video analysing how Solskjaer can improve United offensively as this was a great example of how good Ronaldo is in the air and why United should be using these crossing situations more often but you can see here as Shaw's about to put the deep cross into the box that Ronaldo's positioning is perfect rather than holding a central position where he would be competing with the centre backs for the header he pulls round the back into the space between the two Atalanta defenders as this gives him an advantage as now he can move on to the ball which gives him the power to then direct the ball into the bottom corner and win the game for United and once again their individual attacking brilliance has bailed United out once again. Now while Solskjaer did take a lot of criticism for the first half performance, I didn't think United actually played that bad, but I do think Atalanta's style of play really played into United's hands, because their aggressive pressing style did leave space between the lines, and we saw how good Fernandez was at picking up the ball in this space and creating chances, and to be honest, in the first half alone United should have had two goals, and in the second half they had a couple of great chances as well. So overall, whilst this was a comeback, I do think United deserved the victory and played pretty well, however the same problems in United's game seem to be rearing their head, particularly defensively as I don't think Maguire is at the elite level that United need. So thank you for watching, if you enjoyed the video remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, I've got some Manchester United videos coming out very soon, the ones I have got out will be linked in the description below as well as my video podcast, so check those out, click the bell for notifications, the Zidane video should be out soon, as well as a video looking at what I would do if I was Manchester United manager, hopefully that will get out before the weekend, and I will be posting more on my Twitter and my Instagram, so go follow me on there for more content as well.